Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second traditional Southeast European Bonsai Symposium. Okay. I feel very much at home here. I must tell you, I came down yesterday. It took me ten hours. Now, nine hours to come to Split and one hour from Split here to come. The highway and everything was closed because of catastrophe. And I was the only one on the road. And I said, where is the catastrophe? <laughs> <laughs> a lot about trees in the next two days and it will be very difficult and very complex. Okay, so I have thought about this to give you some frame of, of thought. We will speak a lot about the horticultural aspects and the artistic aspects of bonsai. And if you understand these, then it is important for you to, to, to find out now what is really important, what, uh, what really counts. And after you have this theoretical frame, you still don't know what to do. <laughs> so I tell you, how do you really start? We will now spend about an hour going through this theory. It is very complicated and you will not understand everything. Then after this, we will take every single tree out there and we will speak about every single tree. And while we do that, we will go back to some points of the event. In the end, you will have a much better understanding of this frame. Okay. Many people start too early on the artistical aspects of bonsai and, 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 and think they know enough about the horticultural already. But that makes bonsai so interesting and also so difficult that you dealing with a, a tree that is alive and, and, and you have to cooperate with the tree so you first of all have to understand horticulture. In Asia they stress horticulture first and in my eyes they do that too much. You see, They, they concentrate so much on horticulture that they forget the artistic aspect. So all these points here that uh, I will speak about are not standalone. They're all interdependent. It's very, very complex. Okay, let's start with the horticultural aspects. And here, first of all, we have to understand is our tree healthy or not? Okay, you are in a very early stage of your development as bonsai enthusiasts. And your normal problem is you act too fast. You kill your trees because you do work too fast. Okay, you have to understand that if you collect a tree now, which is possible, you probably should only start three to five years from now to work on it. I know that you're going to start earlier, but don't blame me if you kill your tree. It depends on the species. Yeah. There are some species that allow you to work very quickly with them. Let's take the olive, for example. It's a very easy tree. Or carpinos, the horde. It's an easy tree. Ili grab. Very difficult, usually are conifers. Pines are easier than junipers. Spruce, pisea are, are, are very difficult. Okay, so you have to understand the botany. You have to know what species you work with. You have to understand how that species, species works. They're all different, okay? And you have a framework of the scientific classifications. There are plant families. And this is important for you to know. It's called the family because they are similar. So, so that's very helpful for you. If you know one maple, you can understand other maples. Okay, let's take one example, the olive family. Okay. You may know that it's very easy to collect an olive. Even if it has no roots, you have a chance for the tree to grow. So if you know this, it is very helpful to know that the filirea is also from the olive family. So it, it looks, the filirea looks a bit like the olive, and you can also collect it easily with the little roots, it will still grow. And if, it cut, if you cut it back, there will always be a new growth, which is very good for bonsai. Okay. What most people do not know is that the ash, the fraxinus, is also from that. So the fraxinus also is a bit similar. And also sirlinga, you know what sirlinga is? Fleeda, lilac. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Siringa. 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 Now that is Professor. The Siringa looks very, very different from an olive, right? Mm -hmm. Totally different. But it's, it's good to know that it comes from that family because the Siringa, you can almost cut with, with 
with no roots and it will still grow. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Anyway, these were some examples how important it is to understand botany. So you must understand your trees and not have this silly pride, oh, I'm an artist, I'm not a botanist. I have a few colleagues who come from the artistic side and they look down at gardens. Okay, and that is very silly because first of all you have to be a very good gardener. Okay. So you have to understand what happens botanically, horticulturally when you develop a piece of material. Right. If you want to thicken a trunk, how do you thicken the trunk? What happens? Uh, you have to understand that the energy of the tree does not come from the roots, it comes from the foliage. Now, if I want to fatten my trunk, I drink beer and eat pork and sauerkraut and potatoes, okay? So, <laughs> so then I get a fat trunk. Now, a sophisticated way of saying is, I take carbohydrates, protein and fat. And in the food there is minerals and vitamins and hormones. Okay. Now people make the big mistake of thinking that the tree works just like this. Like they think with feeding uh, the tree gets the energy to grow fat. The feeding uh, with uh, uh, corn. Yeah. Yeah. The truth is that feeding is like adding vitamins and minerals. It's like saying, if I want to grow fat, all I have to do is eat vitamins and get some minerals with mineral water. Uh, you think I'll grow fat? No, yeah, because that is not energy. That is just add-ons in addition. Okay. Uh, the tree gets the energy from the foliage with the assimilation. The, and the water, which comes from the roots up through the trunk into the foliage, in combination with the air, carbon dioxide, H2O plus H, uh, CO2 makes C6H12O6. Okay, carbon hydrate. Okay. I don't know if you want to be careful what I'm saying. Okay. So, so this is the carbon hybrid. It's wood, okay? It's starch, wood, sugar, okay? Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. That is what a plant is made of. And in order to, for this to function, the, the creation of carbon hydrates and the creation of a tree, it also needs, besides water and air, it also needs some minerals. Uh, however, it can also work for a while with very little or no minerals, okay? Uh, but it cannot function without assimilation. It, it will, it, there will be no creation of energy. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one important sentence for many people is a big surprise. It is not that the roots <coughs> feed the tree, it's the other way around. The tree feeds the roots. Okay. We will go through this more because it's very important for you to understand. I know it's boring, but it's important. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, why is this so important to understand? Because in, bo in bonsai, you very often cut uh, branches. So you cut away foliage. So you have to understand that if you cut off foliage, you're taking away the possibility of the tree to create energy. That's especially important in the early stages, after you collect a tree, you shouldn't cut too much because the tree now needs, needs enough energy to grow new roots. Sure. I have some colleagues who don't really understand this. And they're very good artists, but that's worthless because they kill all the trees. Okay. So you have to understand how you create taper on a trunk. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that the more energy is created, the more energy can be stored in the tree, and that storage is, is thickness. Oh. If you have very low branches and let these grow tremendously, the, the trunk below the branches will thicken. Okay. Uh. The roots bring up water to the tree, into the branches, into the foliage, uh, and the Foliage creates energy with assimilation, and that energy flows back into the branch and into the trunk. To the, to the uh, no. And since the green is the, on, the green is the only source of energy, the more green, the more energy. Uh, okay. 
And this is why we have learned the triangular form of trees. Okay. The triangular form is because the more green here, the more energy will go and the thicker the trunk will be. Okay. Now you have to understand that this is horticultural development of material. Artistically, that is not good. Artistically, you want this. So the trick is that for 20 years you have a triangle and when the taper is, is here and the lower branches are thick enough, then you can have a more oval crown. And in Asian nurseries, the trees are all triangular. So people went over like Janaka, Yuji Yoshimura, and, and 40 years ago, they went to Japan and they learned to make triangles. So, so there, there is no need to create a triangle here. You can right away start to build a, 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 a crown. But sometimes you have this wonderful taper and you have some branches up on top and you want some down there. Okay. Uh, then you have to understand that while you, while you may have some little branches here, they will be not in proportion because they will be very thin. Mm -hmm. And when these up here will be thicker. Now is a good example of why it's important to understand the energy flow. If I have a, a, a long uh, trunk and I want some branches down here, I want to thicken the branches, I have to understand how do I thicken a branch. Okay. That's I want to thicken this branch, I let it grow in as much green as possible. The, since only green uh, develops energy, the more green, the more energy, the more energy, the thicker the trunk, the, the branch will be. So I let this grow freely and that will thicken. Uh, so the tree will look very silly for 10 years. And then you can cut this off here and then some new growth will come out on the sides and you have a, a, a wealth proportion. Mm -hmm. And they came back and wrote their famous books and they taught us that bonsai is about creating triangles. No, the triangle is only here to create this taper. So you are very lucky in this country to be able to find very good material right next to the road. Now the, the trees out there for Japanese people are like gold. They already have this taper. Okay. You have to understand what happens when you style a tree. Like if you bend a branch, what happens? Uh, it's pretty obvious that, that if there are cells, which actually, there's two kinds of cells basically. One is uh, the water flow from the roots up uh, to the foliage and one the energy flow back and this is all longitudinal cells which work like a tube now if you bend the branch uh, these tubes will will close and they even break so even if it's artistically desirable to have a certain bend you must be very careful to not kill the branch doing that now we come back to the botany again because that's different in different species if you take uh, an olive, for example, or carpinus, a thin branch like, like my finger, if you bend it too much, it will break and will probably be dead. With uh, pines or spruce, you can easily bend a, a branch like that. On uh, pinus sylvestris, we bend trunks like this, and it does not die. It may even break, but it still doesn't die. Then you have to understand what happens when I wire. So people always ask me, uh, how long does the wire stay on? So that's not my decision. That tree decides that. As soon as it grows into the wire, the, the, people say the wire grows into the tree. No, it's the other way around. The tree grows into the wire, then, then you have to take it off. Uh, people tell me, yes, but in our climate, it's in six weeks, the tree grows into the wire. Fine. Take the wire off and wire again the other way around. Oh, really? The wire a second time? Well, you have to wire ten times. Okay. Then we have to understand, especially with 
collected trees, conifers mostly, we have to understand deadwood. What happens with the, with the deadwood? Uh, I didn't say all this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Everybody knows that on conifers we have this wonderful gin and shari, but what happens with deciduous trees? Right. Okay. We have a deadwood on a an oak or a carpinus? Yes, sure we can. And many uh, people are very much afraid that the tree will be eaten by fungus. Uh, well, the truth is that the core of the tree is dead. And it will decay uh, by fungus, bacteria, and, and by just nature, by natural environment. It will, it will decay. But as a general rule, it will not kill the tree, even if it's full of fungus. The tree will not be dead. So we are still at the horticultural side. You have to understand that horticulturally, deadwood is not really a problem, even if there's fungus. So it's more your artistic decision whether you want to have deadwood or not. You, you don't have to worry too much about the horticultural side. We very often hear that the fungus killed the tree. That may even be true, but some people are very scared of oh, fungus. Fungus is terrible. Fungus kills the tree. It's like bacteria can kill me. There's bacteria everywhere. I'm sorry, I, I, I cannot escape bacteria. Everywhere is bacteria. Okay. No. Fact is that 99.9% .9 of fungus and bacteria are not dangerous. Okay. So you don't have to worry too much and be scared about cutting, about having holes in your tricks. That is, that is just a fairy tale that, that, that fungus will go in. Yes, fungus will go in, but it will not kill the tree. And the typical know-how is you, you cut something off and you have to seal it, right? You have to mm -hmm. seal it. Okay. okay. This is your trunk, and here you cut off, and here and here you seal. So the green is 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 where you seal. Okay. This is the trunk. This was the branch. You cut the branch off, and then people seal this. Okay. Why? Why do you seal? Uh, <laughs> from what? Bacteria, from fungus, from little critters that will eat the tree. Well, <laughs> you, know, you know what they like? They like a moist, warm, cozy environment. Okay. You put some seal on it and you create a warm, moist environment for the fungus to do its work. I know it sounds like blasphemy, but in modern gardening, you don't seal wounds anymore because of that. Because you, you create a contrary effect. Okay, so now we are finished with the horticultural side for, for this moment. We will come back to it, of course, all the time. Now we come to the artistic aspect. People who have not read too much think there is one way of doing bonsai. There's one bonsai style, which is the classical style. Okay. Many people actually think that this is the only correct Style. If bonsai is an art, you have to ac accept that there is many, many ways of doing it, and you can call these ways a style. There is something that is called classical style, and we all know what that is. Or do we? Maria, How is it possible <laughs> that that Mr. Kimura says to me that he is styling in classical style? He said that to me. Now, uh, you see, so do. Kimura's trees look like what you think classical no. style is. I don't think they do at all. <laughs> uh, radically different. Uh, okay. Classical is what John Naka has drawn in his books, right? Uh, well, how come that there is a, a, a book uh, about 20 years ago, classical trees of Japan, and the trees don't look like John Naka trees? And, he, and they also don't look like, like the trees in Gokufu Ten now. I think it's about time to forget the term classical here. It's a misnomer, it's a wrong name. Mm -hmm. In art, in general, classical means there was a time when things were done correct, everything was right and it's gone, and, and, and we all look back and admire that. So that is what, what classical means, classical painting, classical sculpture, classical music, classical theater, and modern is the, is the other, usually, okay? So, yeah, so, so this is a concept, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if Kimura says that I, that Kimura says I work classically, then he doesn't mean classical. He means 
classical is whatever is state of the art at the moment. So uh, my, my new definition is classical style depends on the time and is the mainstream of Japanese art at that time. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if you insist that what Jonaka taught us is classical and that's good and everything else is bad, you will do a ritual. You will do bonsai state of the art of 1955 in Japan. But I'm, I have to make it clear, that's nothing against your micro. It's only to understand where, where are you? What's your concept? You see, at that time, that was mainstream in Japan. Now, in every art, mainstream changes all the time. So you cannot say that this is uh, the right way and everything else from then on is the wrong way. Uh, it's, it's moving. It's a moving target. Classical bonsai is a moving target. Uh, for me, it's a, it's, it's, it clearly Kimura is not doing classical bonsai. I think he's doing modern bonsai. And they are very abstract, meaning they don't give you... They don't look very natural. They are very abstract. They give you a very strong, powerful impression, but they are not... They, they, they do not give you a very natural impression. So they're, is another radically different style, which is a naturalistic style, which is a tree, a bonsai, that really gives you the feeling of a natural tree. So you have to understand that every modeling of a tree means abstraction. You cannot avoid abstraction, but you have to make up your mind how much abstraction do you want in the end. Okay. Okay. Then there are other styles, like Penjin style, you can call it, or, or some yeah. people even have finished uh, the idea, the concept of a bonsai looking like a tree. They make a bonsai looking like a sculpture. Uh, now, it's a question of taste, what you prefer, but you have to be very careful to say this is right and this is wrong. There is no such thing as right and wrong. Okay, so, so look at many different trees. Now with the in internet, you have a big advantage of having them. Uh, uh, you're able to see so many different trees and try to find what you like best. And be very careful of people who tell you what is right and wrong. Okay. Okay. Then we come to the forks. The style is a different thing than the fork. Let's take uh, uh, the cascade form. Do you know what a classical cascade would look like? Now in the naturalistic style, there can be a very natural looking cascade. So that really shows you that there's a, there's a difference between style and form, and these two words are somehow often used uh, the wrong way. And it's important to understand the classical concepts of these forms, formal, upright, informal, etc. You have to understand them and be able to form them, but then, then you forget them. Uh, so after you have learned to, to, be, to master the standard forms, my advice is forget them. And then be open and avoid stereotypes. Of course, I have to add, in the beginning, that's the only thing you can do. You, you make a copy of a copy in order to learn. But in the end, you have to stop copying. Uh, now, what happened is, in a very simple way, the very first meme, Adam, okay? Adam created a bonsai. He looked at the big tree, and then he created this abstract small tree. What, from what he could see. So, so, so that was the first bonsai. The sons of Adam yeah, <laughs> then went to look at this little tree and made a copy of this little tree. Okay. Uh, it's the family business again. <laughs> <laughs> since, since centuries, people are copying what somebody else has done. And my message is so simple. How could this be blasphemy? Uh, how could, um, my message is so simple. simple. That look at the original tree that Adam looked at you know, and find your own way of abstracting. And if you have a few stereotype forms in your head, you will have a, a difficulty of taking, uh, pu imposing these stereotype forms onto your collected material. If you let, on the other hand, the material tell you what form it likes, which is not a standard form, then it's much easier for you and you can use a, a wide variety of material. You have to understand that most bonds I teaching uh, originating in Japan is about working on nursery material. We do not work on nursery material. We work on the stuff that's out there. Uh, that is normally not taught in Japanese. Uh, 
one size fits all. That's considered some, something for very for specialists, for real artists. <coughs> okay. However, here, that's what we that's what we have. This is our material. Uh, so we better find a way of teaching this to beginners. And the, working with wild material is very often radically different artistically and sometimes even horticulturally from working with nursery material. Uh, so while I very often sound in sound like I'm radically different from classical bonsai concepts, it's really we speak about two widely different things here. Uh, okay. Now you say, well, Walter, you are really telling us that there are no bonsai rules. For well, sure, there are bonsai rules, and they have a lot of value. There are very, very important general rules about proportion, rhythm, movement, and harmony. These are these apply to art in general, and they of course also apply to bonsai. And you better understand all these things and you learn them because you cannot say there are no rules. These there certainly are rules, otherwise you will not create a good piece of art. Okay. And my advice is to find your preference your taste. You have to find your own taste. Is it beauty? Do we want a beautiful bonsai? Now, if I ask a big crowd, is bonsai about creating a beautiful tree? They will say, yes. They will say, yes. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I say, no. Yeah. How can you mean? It's not a I say, no. It's about creating a tree with a strong impression. You can impress very easily with beauty. You can also create uh, impressed with character. Character can even make you ugly and it can still be impressive. Okay? Uh, a good trick is to have work with a combination strong character and beauty. That works very well. And if you try very much and very hard to impress your audience, you're creating Kitsch. Kitsch is aggressive beauty, aggressive character. It's obvious that he tries to impress us. That is not good. If, uh, if, if you accept this definition of Kitsch, then 85% of all bonsai is kitsch. Okay, that's the bad news. The good news is I, I love kitsch. <laughs> I have a lot of beer. I, I sing this kitsch songs of the Alps. It's wonderful. Yes. Kitsch is wonderful. <laughs> but you have to understand you don't have to think that you're an artist, but you have to understand how a good artist thinks. Well, in my opinion at least, maybe you, you can agree to that or not. In my opinion, a good artist tries to do the right thing, the very best that he can do. And it does not matter what the world thinks of it. You must be very honest, genuine is the English word, genuine, truth. Truth is extremely important in art. And, and if it's, it's good art, then people can see that, or not, because many people are blind. Then, yeah. uh, I have to bring myself back, because I, I, I personally try to work very artistic, but you have to understand, not everybody is a born artist. So it's perfectly okay for you to also do bonsai, even if you think I'm not a very good artist, and then you do it more like a craft. It's like... But play tennis. I mean, my wife plays tennis. You think she's world class? <laughs> no, she's not even regional class. Hey, she's she's housewife class. We are thinking yeah. this. Huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, she, 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 if I if I'm your guest, uh, your wife plays tennis best for me. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she plays tennis almost every day. Okay. You think she should stop playing tennis because she does not play world class? No, she's at home. She plays tennis every day. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so in the end, it's it's the most important thing is you must like what you do and you must have fun doing it, especially if it's just your hobby. If it's your profession, of course, you have to do what I do: very hard work, teaching. Okay. <laughs> Even if you do it as a hobby, which is the norm, I think you still should try to get better all the time. That's a minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are still here in the artistic aspects, and there is something that stands out, which is this front. Why? That's a that's a singular piece. Why would I put that there? Okay. That stands out for me because that's the most misunderstood concept of bonsai. Okay. Uh, in general, 
uh, in bonsai teaching, you are taught the very first and the most important thing for you is to find the best front. And then you work according to that front and never change that again. Now this comes from a very classical uh, bonsai concept. And it has a lot to do with Asian, East Asian culture. You have to know, maybe many do not know this, that East Asian paintings like Chinese or Japanese paintings do not use perspective as, as we do. There's a different concept of drawing than we have in the European sort of... And the, other con the other thing is that bonsai was meant to be shown in a tokonoma. So the tokonoma is, is a Buddhist house altar. And in that altar you put the bonsai and you view it like sitting or kneeling from only one side. And this is why bonsai, the, the, this, this is where the concept comes from, one single side. Now in our culture we have the bonsai in the garden and look at them from all sides. It does not really matter what exact style your bonsai in, is in, but I, I think it still should look good from all sides. But if you work in the naturalistic side, it absolutely must look credible from all sides. How do I say credible and not good here? Because a real tree does not have a front. You can walk around it and it will look good from many sides. And you may decide, oh, this is the side I like best. Somebody else may find a different side that he or she likes best. So I create bonsai that look like trees. That is why I don't even speak of bonsai. I, I don't design bonsai, I design trees. So for me, it's very important that the tree does not have a front. It has many, many fronts. Uh, uh, and I have to warn you not li to listen too much to me. Because if you don't want to work naturalistic, which is fine, then for you it's important to have a front. For me it's not. Okay. Now we are through with this. But now you still don't know what to do. So what is really important <laughs> in the beginning? So, so where, where are you, what, what's important? Most people look at what, what is the biggest and, and, and of course the most important thing, which is the crown. Okay, and that is very important to understand now. The crown is not important. Mm. What you're looking first is not important because you can create that later. Okay. Uh, so the surface roots, or to use a Japanese name, nebari, that is important. Okay. And then the movement and character of the lower part of the trunk <laughs> is that important. And cut. that in connection with the nebari. That decides about the future form of the tree. Sometimes, but not always, the placement of the main branches is important. And there you have to make your decision. And then you can create a crown around that always. Okay. So, that's what's important. Now you still don't know how to start. So you put this tree, this material in front of you, and I ask you, Please listen to the trick. Find the soul of the trick. The soul you don't find with your brain, the soul you find with your own soul. Let the soul speak to each other. And if you have a lot of experience, you will then very quickly have a vision or several visions of what this tree can be in, in many years. But that yeah. doesn't help you because you will have no vision. No. Uh, There's a few tricks. How do I get a vision? Simplify your tree. Okay. Well, try to think what happens if it's, if, if it's much smaller, what if, uh, if uh, some branches are not there, or often you have a multi-trunk, what if I ha only have one trunk? So try to, to make uh, the, the tree simpler. If you are very experienced, then you can do this in your mind, like a chess player can think of 15 moves ahead. Okay. But since I could never play 15 moves and you cannot play 15 moves, there must be an easier way. If you cannot imagine what the tree looks without a branch, then you have to cut off the branch and then see. <laughs> so cut out everything that you know is not good and in the end what was left is good. Uh, One concept that very often works is find the smallest possible bonsai. Not always, but 95% out of all times, the smallest is the, is the best solution. Okay. When you analyze your material, you use your brain 
and your know-how and your soul. To make a decision, you follow your soul. Okay. Very important now. How to start? You have to do something. Act, even if it's a mistake. But it's better to do something than to do nothing. It's a big mistake to leave many options for later. Okay, after this most boring general introduction, we will now have a break of five to ten minutes, and then we'll start with real tricks. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Ah, 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 ah,